All right, here we are at Godolphin Raceway. Obviously, this truck is not stock in any way uh, with the body. This is an old Arma two-wheel drive uh, short course truck body. And from what I understand, they only sold it in the U.S. for a short time. And it was sold in Europe a little bit longer, so I actually got it off Amazon. And I have eight scale adapters on and just for kind of the aesthetics, just for fun. They're a bit taller than the standard wheels, so obviously that's not stock. Uh, of course, I have a brushless motor set up in here. The brushless motor setup is uh, originally from a Helion Dominus Pro SC, another short course truck, which I had, and uh, 3000 kV uh, 540 size can, 60 amp ESC, uh, running a 3S battery here, or maybe a 2S. The um, Everything else is stock on it. Uh, well, I do have a metal gear transmission, but this truck overall has been awesome. Uh, even as a stock truck, this thing is just soft. It's very forgiving. You'd think because of the higher uh, center of gravity chassis that it would flip more easily. Unless you're a pro and you can really maintain high speeds around curves, I don't think that's an issue at all. So let's just see how it does around the track. Now this in comparison to my FTX, the suspension is, is definitely better in this setup. I, I don't think the big jump suspension is the main concern here, but the overall setup is better. I think there, it, there's definitely some more intelligent engineering or higher level engineering that uh, ECX has. In comparison to a Traxxas Slash two-wheel drive, I don't see any major difference. Again, unless you're a pro, which if you're a pro, you wouldn't even consider a Traxxas Slash. It's just not level truck in any way this is totally fine this is great I think it just it's very soft easy for a beginner to drive and even if you're more experienced it's really enjoyable I have the stock suspension set up stock shocks only thing that I did was I changed the oil weights this is a two-wheel drive it's very heavy in the rear compar uh, comparatively and the front is is is, uh, is very light, so I put a 20 weight oil in the front, and that helped with the uh, overall responsiveness and a little bit more traction in the front. The rear, I've got 35 weight, but stock shocks. I don't have aluminum shocks. I have I don't have aluminum anything basically on the bottom of this truck. Uh, speaking of which, aluminum is not a great idea, really. For almost anything that could potentially get hit, like suspension related, it's not a great idea. It's best to have plastic. And this plastic on this truck is a little more flexible than the Traxxas stuff, but it means it's more durable. If you hit something, you're much less likely to shear or just snap a suspension arm, some other component. So let me try to wrap this up. The positives. This truck is very low cost compared to the Slash. That is huge. Especially nowadays with the inflation going crazy. Uh, these trucks are just continuing to climb in price. Nothing's getting cheaper. And then if you're gonna anticipate upgrading, it's, it's you're, you're paying well over $300 for a brushless two-wheel drive Slash. This is probably $150 cheaper with a brushless kit that you could pop in. It's really not hard to do that. Other benefit I would say is this has really tough parts overall. There are, uh, there are also replacements available pretty much at any hobby town and definitely online. You can, you can certainly get the parts that you need. Not an issue. The negatives, I would say, the plastic gear transmission which is stock does not hold up to brushless power for very long. It will actually take brushless power for a while but if you encounter a um, 
some situation that the wheels bind like I did. I caught a piece of landscape fabric and it instantly stripped the main differential gear. Then you need to upgrade the transmission. The second part that I would replace would be the, um, what would be the second thing? I don't think there's really any other thing I would replace. Maybe the upper links on the suspension. They're very, very flexible. Again, which is forgiving for crashing, but it does mean that you're going to have less precision if you want to start running this faster and more precisely around a track. But for kids, beginners, it's great. So the only other thing I would say needs to be upgraded is the Spectrum STX2 transmitter and the SRX200 receiver. Maybe not the transmitter as much as the receiver. It has about half the response time of all the contemporary Spectrum receivers and others that are on the market. So it's just really slow and it makes the servo that comes with this, which is a Spectrum branded servo, feel really slow. And it's not. It's just the receiver. There's a I would say a, a 0.18 second delay, which is about twice what everybody else is nowadays. So that makes it feel sluggish. You can get used to it and anticipate it, but it does feel sluggish. And so that was one of the first things that I swapped out was the radio system. And then I also um, got rid of the servo saver, which is a little soft. Not bad for beginners, but once you start running it, brushless speeds around a track, that gets old. But that is pretty much it. This truck is an excellent value. It's hundreds of dollars cheaper than a comparable slash in its brushless form. Parts availability is excellent. It's very durable, handles great, even with that higher center of gravity. Not a big issue unless you're a pro. I think it's overall a win.